Unchained. Uh, they're going to come talk to us today. They are a local Salesforce.com partner. And Mike Parity is the, began his CRM career in syndicated data analytics and went on to build and lead the customer relationship solutions division for General Electric. In 2001, he founded Benevis, which later spawned into demand chain systems. DCS is an organization dedicated to helping leadership teams drive sustainable growth and profitability with Salesforce.com program and platform solutions. He is here today to discuss and demonstrate the initial functionality of a new program governance solution. Please help me welcome Mike from Demand Chain. Thank you, Kathy. We really appreciate uh, this opportunity to speak in front of such a incredible group. Um, as well as thanks to all those that asked to have to hear a little bit more from us uh, in one of the past meetings. We are uh, going to talk a little bit about something that isn't a lot of fun. It's not like your whiz bang app. It's not exciting. But maybe one last poll. Who in the room has has been concerned about and thought a lot about governance? Who do you remember Salesforce version? Governance affects everyone. You know, the first project's the easy one. The second gets a little harder, third gets a little harder, and it just continually heads down that path because of the complexity. Um, there's a way to manage that, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Mike, before we, you start, we, you have we are. You're done. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to uh, be giving away iPad Mini. Hello. I sort of want it because I've got the iPad holding. <laughs> and I, I would like to have uh, anyone that puts a card in, we're going to pull it. Or yeah, yeah, we're gonna uh, pull a card and give it to whoever. Okay. And just whoever FYI, I'm gonna pass this around to grab the cards in. These are some fun bags. If you are interested in having a fun bag that says I love using group therapy, Laura's in the back of the room. Laura, do you want to stand up? She'll be happy to get you one. All right, go for it. All right, thank you. Um <clears throat> and we are also gonna be offering something at the end to allow the organization to Start down a path. We're going to demonstrate the beginnings of that and talk about the customer that um, we're working with to do it. Um, so, a couple topics first. Who are we? Once well, so us. Why is this so hard? I think we all know, but we just want to reiterate. Um, what is governance, or what is the structure of governance, and uh, ultimately, how do you? We'll, we'll talk all about that and then wrap it up with one slide of what we do. Um, so we've been doing Salesforce for a long time. That's all we think about. We think of ourselves as CRM experts and customer relationship management experts. We um, only work with Salesforce. We have worked with other products. I've been doing this since our magic days, GoldenEye. You know, all you had was GoldenEye hat. And every product in between. I almost lost hope during the Siebel days because it seemed like not a pat on the back and went out the door and we came back six months later and we were doing the same things over and over again. Um, we've deployed hundreds of Salesforce engagements, hundreds more if you include everything else, like PMA. Um, we've been focusing increasingly on larger, more complex, complex situations just because of what we've been growing through a framework and model that we use as that structure. And um, it's a model-based program architecture. And we're shifting from a project focus to a program focus. I think everybody needs to consider that because um, if you're just running independent projects and not thinking about the program as a whole, that's when you, uh, it gets increasingly difficult to make changes in any meaningful way because you have to have so many things that were architected by your main plan that had going forward in the rest. So, why is this so hard? Everything sounds like a good idea. I mean, you, I could, I could think, anybody here, and I know I could convince you to do 15 more things that you weren't thinking about, and, and convince you to say, gee, that would be really valuable. There's no end to it. We'll explain why, and, and more importantly, and how you take a grip on that. Um, from a measurement standpoint, how do you isolate what you're doing in the overall performance of the organization? It's difficult when you when you increase operational efficiency, when you do something that's very difficult, or when you're able to automate something that 
you already do it using a back office activity. Um, of course, that's incredibly valuable. Salesforce has no end to the things that you need to do. Uh, again, how do you manage it so that you don't, it doesn't get harder, but actually it gets easier. And you build momentum in there and you build well for another five years or 10 years. Um, so, measurements is, is a challenge. You, you can't always do it on revenue. Revenue go up. That's the big number. But then there are, you know, did we generate more leads? Well, how many new product launches did we have that year? That increase in leads now doesn't seem like enough. Or half those leads were qualified and purchased. Well, that's fantastic. And they were high quality leads. You know, it's hard to manage a number unless you break things up. Um, organizations that aren't functionally aligned. I mean, for accountability reasons, accountability reasons, we create organizations uh, in silos or you know, functional, functional silos. Um, and that's because you can put management over them, measure them, and keep them contained within an area that they can you can manage and you can measure. And yet customers flow through us horizontally, success flows to us horizontally, function to function to function. How do you make decisions across function with team leaders, or functional leaders, division, heads? How do you get them all on the same page flowing through when you know your greatest bottleneck is just one, one, one of them at a time, one area at a time? And ultimately, the only constant in most CRM programs is change. Uh, customers ask for new things, we buy a new division, you add a new product, small companies add a new employee, it just constantly changes. And expectations mature, and you're adding new functionality, maybe not new things, but to varying degrees of complexity or detail. So that's why it's, that's why it's difficult. And um, does anybody disagree with that? Any hands that would say that those aren't big ones? We're gonna have a QA at the end, 10, 15 minutes, if that makes sense. So what is what is governance? What is the structure of governance? Well, first of all, the pyramid is what we all deal with. Um, you've got a strategy. It's a small amount of effort, high value. You can invert the triangle if you wanted to show executive seats. But to, to begin with, you've got a strategy. It's a small, a smaller thing. But at the bottom, we're all able, everything happens. You've got business and technology. Just one example of the division between organization at the highest level, you've got very very serial focused people, process oriented people, step by step check boxes, people on the right side of that triangle. On the, on the left side, you could probably look at that more from a relationship management sales type people, very parallel thinkers. They, they don't think check boxes, they think general sense. They, they combine a whole bunch of things and assess things with multiple metrics at every step. So one is efficient, one is really more effectiveness. Sales has to be effective, otherwise they can live in efficiency with this, this specific drivers of satisfaction and loyalty and lose customers. Um, so, and the challenge is when you talk about sales, you know, think operational here, business and customer on the inside. Um, sales is a function, selling is something everybody in the organization should be doing. Service is a function of servicing is something that everyone in the organization should be doing. So how do you build that into your organization using Salesforce so you accelerate your own program? On the right is a way of looking at it that isn't so one directional. This is the way our model was built and framework was built. Um, on the outside, that really is a constant flow. You know, your customers, just because they bought, are they also a lead? Of course, they still work. And they're continually running through a cycle. You got a framework that doesn't stop maturing. Um, so on the outside are all the functional things, top more potential building, bottom more execution, or realizing potential. And in the middle are four competencies that everybody needs and have to have them. You need clarity. If you don't have clarity, it's scary making decisions. You know, making it, it I mean, this can be thought of from a program, a technical program, Salesforce program. It can be thought of from a business leadership standpoint. Every level applies, and we'll talk about why governance is both at the board, you know, from the board all the way down to a user in the center of a service group. You know, clarity, making fact-based decisions with clarity, setting priorities is, is a little bit scary, a little bit risky or challenging. If you haven't made good fact-based decisions about what you're going to do, doing it really fast, which is consistency in the processes, you, you get executed. You could be doing the wrong thing, or 
you know, it's, it's a little scarier to set constant process in place when it might not be just the right process or the right way of doing the process. But ultimately, as soon as you think you got this right, it starts to change. So how do you manage all of this is what we're going to talk about and show you a little start of an app that um, we're working on. So to have a successful CRM program, you know, I keep talking about four things because I'm just going to talk about this. If you don't have your language aligned, you're going to struggle. And we all know, I could ask, when anybody, when anyone's organization talks to me, they, not, this is not the case, that's fantastic. I could ask questions like, what defines a prospect? What is a lead? How do you qualify a lead? And I'll get different answers. Of course. Um, even what's a customer? Well, they did business with us one time, 10 years ago, are they still a customer? No. So the relationship changed. They, they, your system needs to keep up. Repeatable baseline measures, just reinforcing the fact that if you don't have something that's objective, that covers everything you're doing, it's really, it's really challenging to, to tell a business team, here's why we need to do this in a different order. They will tell you, no, just do it, that's what we want. I'm suggesting you can convince them that there's a better way to do it. That there's a better order and priority potential. They could be right, you could be right. But you can work together within a consistent framework that makes it easy for you to make decisions together. The organizational functional alignment is, I was talking about earlier, how do you get everyone working together horizontally without telling people that they've got to wait? I'm sure you've all said to somebody, no, no, that's not going to happen now. We can't do that yet. We're going to wait on that. That's the next release. We're going to do this first. And, they, and unless you can say, here's why, <laughs> what if they're right? What if for the business that's the best thing to do? It, it, it's, it makes it possible, you've got to make it possible for administrators, which are really the people that make Salesforce work and happen, you've got to have a way of communicating with all forms of users, some of which you don't probably understand in some ways, but be able to help align them with what you think and what you're trying to accomplish as an organization or as you maybe even look at. Then ultimately, if it's not aligned with customer continuum, you could all be doing something wrong. So everything you do needs to be aligned with what is the customer really expecting of the organization at various phases in its development. So the relationship early is just should I spend more time with this organization? For a lot of you, our, our objective in our CRM is we just want to get them to say, I'll spend a little bit more time talking to you. If you move through that, eventually we get to how would you do it otherwise? Would you be willing to switch? You know, are your requirements, needs, or wants? You know, we go through processes that that get you to something that is what you need and gives you ultimately what you want, which is great results. So those four underlying competencies of our model feed into a successful CRM. We're going to talk a little bit about how we make that happen. Now. There, the organization, I know David Seifert and Pete Tracy are here. They're, they're with Internet, uh, Integrated Government Solutions. They've, they've built a, a, a good solution with uh, a team in Trenton Town. And um, what they've got is an incredible amount of governance tool sets and expertise and processes and ways of doing things within boards, within executive boards, um, large educational institutions, um, uh, corporate enterprises, of course, and the nonprofits. And they, and they do incredibly well. Well known for it and they have an incredible set of tools. I, when I saw them, I thought, you know, the reason why this is so interesting to me is that you know, it's completely in the structure that we have that you could benefit from. And we talked through that, and um, we are now working to combining those two things, a body of a domain of knowledge or expertise, just like your organizational business leaders have in your, your organizations, and a structure which Salesforce is a technology, technologies are inherently rigid, they're structured, they do exactly what you're told to do, uh, but businesses are not. You, you know, combining those two sides of the organization is what, what they're trying to do at the executive level and board level, and have got the tools to do it. We're just trying to bring structure. We're not trying to be, give you all of the tools. We're the experts of what to do when we want to be able to do. The governance is more about structure than it is about, it's first about structure, and then it's the people that can help you make things happen. 
So Psalm 365 is the product, <coughs> and uh, we're really excited about it. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, and if you think about governance for CRM, you know, we all know that the next layer up where people are reporting go through it and don't support it, it gets harder and harder. If you can get an organization that thinks governance top down, and they think, how do we make sure that we're doing the things we need to do, we have accountability, we're prioritizing, we have clarity, I love Salesforce for all of that. Salesforce is a game system for every executive in the world. They just don't necessarily all know it yet. They know it's important. They know people want it. We want them to pull up their screen first thing in the morning to help direct the organization on drive, make decisions, and do things that they can. So, we want to demonstrate the first couple steps. We, we are not demonstrating their system because we are completely new to this. Structurally, the tool sets they have are fantastic. We just want to get people to the right ones, right time, right place, understand the need. Um, so, but first, I have to. Governance is not as simple as saying, "Here's a system." It's incredibly complex in the back end. I just want to walk through a couple simple slides to talk about how you are establishing a governance program, which is really inside of what we're going to show you. So, I'm going to show you something. That we build up in two days. That's amazing with Salesforce. Um, um, we built it just to show how, with the structural information you can put into the system, Salesforce can enable it very, very quickly. So I've got a couple slides first, but Jeff's ready to show us a few things. I know you all want to see things that are in Salesforce, but um, governance is increasingly complex. So this is a real quick, simple slide, but you work with subjects. Person, you got nouns, person, place, or thing. You're, you're working with those things um, every day. That's what you start with. You deal with something that is a countable item. Could be a person, could be a thing, could be a product, could be just one. You know, complements, compliments, things like complements. A complement is a thing. It's something that every organization should have in Salesforce. Maybe a raise of hands. Who has, every time a customer gives you a compliment, your organization, do you put it in your system somewhere? Some people do. That is fantastic. I don't know. I, I, that's the first thing you should do in Salesforce. But nobody thinks of it because you don't think it's going to get pervasive enough in that area that you focus on functions. If you start at that point, every executive in the world is going to say, hold on, what's the system that keeps track of what people love about us? Because that's what we should be doing more. Actions, of course, you do something with those subjects. So what do you do? You do, you know, you do evaluate them, you appraise them, you quantify them, do all kinds of things actionable. And we can do those in lots of different ways, which are presents, which you know you can do that, you can do any action in many, many different ways. We spent two and a half years building a language model to align all of this more scientifically and mathematically as opposed to um, subjectively which made the difference. We, we tried for years to do it subjectively. Once we started doing it systematically, we had a lot of success very quickly. And Harrington, anybody know about A lot of businesses follow all of you. Everybody who talks about doing business operations that way. Can't measure something. Um, how do you control it? You can't measure it. You, you really, how can you improve something if you can't measure it? You, you don't know if it's getting better. You don't know if it's the right next thing or the last next thing you should do, the last thing you should do. Very difficult to decide on priorities, but that's where we start, which is a, which we're going to show you is the start of you know, Salesforce version of our diagnostic. A lot of you have gone through the diagnostic in other forms. I know some of you, I was talking to Roger Coulter at the 3M. Um, they got it started. They were on Oracle and couldn't get, couldn't get moving on Salesforce. They couldn't make a decision about CRM in general. And a decision between Salesforce and Oracle. And I hope you don't mind talking about this one here, but they, they sued me for talking about it one time, so we were, I'm just bringing it up now. But anyway, they, um, in three and a half, four months, we had the first group decided with the executive team for executive committee. We got through the stage gate process. They deployed the first 600 um, area managers in this group. And um, they pointed back to the fact that we did diagnostic that was objective. 
that helped everyone, leadership team, business, and technology see how everything was different, what the priorities were, what they needed right away, and how you manage or how you break a, a all of the things the system offers. And when you say Salesforce, I think, first I think, wow, this is, I thought that it can do anything for me. Manage any information I want. Ultimately, you better break it down into its little bits and pieces, and assemble it in a, in a meaningful, organized way, or you will end up with something that has clusters of value that don't work with other things well. And Salesforce is approval process. Approval is one number one on our card list of, of things. So it's not our decision, it's how we give language. Um, approval is wonderful if you can approve anything, because you should be able to approve anything. Is that approved? Is that approved? Is that approved the way we talk about it? Is that approved as a product? Is that approved as an action that we take in our product? But that gets very complex. So we measure everything. This is just one example of a measurement at a very high level. Uh, there's countless measures that we can take. We roll them all in advance, and they give you a complete picture of what you could do, what you, know, you should put it in and be ready for. And based on what you're doing today, we can almost tell you what you successfully deployed and what was challenging. Because you're not ready for it, it's going to be hard. So this is my last slide. And we'll talk a little bit about this, but this is my complexity slide. You get objective measures that come from a series of questions and answers in an objective way of the entire organization, including those that don't use Salesforce today because they eventually should. Um, you get um, roadmap planning from that priorities. How do they happen? In what order? And what drives them organizationally and maybe even within a company? You get um, <coughs> The architecture that is critical to Salesforce has done so much for you. It's just a joy to work with for me. I haven't done CRM for almost 20 years now. I, I, I can't believe how well Salesforce makes it, takes away all of the things that used to just be the, oh, and that's not even the hard part. The technology should be the easy part if everything else is done right. But Salesforce took all of that away, which is a joy as we all know. Um, and ultimately, what specific Salesforce technology functionality or custom things you're going to put in? Um, everything, almost everything can be done with configuration these days. But um, if you don't put them in, in the right order, and you don't have them connected to the right things, the Western New York architecture really causes trouble because we all know you, you can't just switch things around because it breaks everything else and make changes. So, seriously, seriously this time, we're going to switch to Jeff, and uh, he's just going to walk through something that starts asking questions. You know, starts asking questions of your organization. There's uh, over 250,000 distinct things that Salesforce can do for an organization as it relates to a customer, a employee relationship, or any relationship really. And um, so you have to ask questions of your organization. What is it that you need and what do you want? Well, you don't do it randomly, you do it in a prioritized order. We've got um, 20, 20 or so individual diagnostics ready to run. We can build more, but most organizations don't need them to that degree yet. And um, we're going to start with one that's very basic, a starter. And as you run a door, you will let any organization go through it, a couple individuals go through it, so you can see what it tells you, how it prioritizes, and ultimately, you're going to want to know what everybody wants. Everyone should be giving you input on what a CRM could do for you. Because if you ask an open-ended question, they set their expectations wrong, potentially, and they're going to think it asks for anything. And group things together in ways that you might not understand. You break it up and say, how do you do this? And they're going to tell you. And if you know what that next best thing is, they're going to say, how do you know that that's something that's right? So this, this, this is a link that you can have. We, we suggest you drive employees through Westmore to set up your governance baseline. But uh, for CRM, a link would drive you to a page like this. We wanted to build it in Salesforce. Here's the last sentence that says it. First, first of all. So we did everything in Salesforce to make it uh, uh, easy. And um, we've got a manual link also. We built it in some other systems. That was a nightmare. And I didn't mind it then. It took us months to build the other one. Salesforce, not even a couple days full time. So 
you, you can you could go through this way all this way. But um, and I've built up some information and that's you know how this all works. This is driving this information into Salesforce, bringing it out of contact. It also creates a diagnostic. Um, it's gonna go through an approval process. So approval is very important. You don't want just anybody going through a diagnostic any time. You want to be able to say what what diagnostic and is it the right time for that person to complete a diagnostic. And then it really is as simple as if you know what questions to ask, it's really just asking a sequence of questions of everybody in different ways. So a sales rep would go through a very specific um, uh, set of questions that are re relevant to them, but aligned with everyone else's. They might not think of um, the uh, value messaging, the marketing things of when they put the message in, this is the message you want to use. They might not think of it. But sales might think of it as a value proposition or an elevator pitch. You know, there's different ways of, of, of saying the same thing. We help, we, we make it easy for you to not have to deal with all of that. You can just say, oh, you mean, you know, let's ask them what they want to be asked. And when we get our result, we apply it to the language we're trying to work with at the moment. So, yeah, approval process, I mean, again, Salesforce is amazing. I mean, I asked them to do this. So that we didn't have to show just portions of it, and um, they pulled it together very quickly. So go to the diagnostic then. So we have further down. The individual could then do a link, put us on the link, and they'll take they'll get into that link and uh, complete. Now, if they're in your org, if you put this in the org, you would you would just have them. They would see what diagnostics do they need to take. They'd be reminded of those diagnostics. They'd complete those diagnostics. And you would get an update to be able to look at a dashboard and start looking at all the decisions that it helps you make. So let's stop here for a second. So if you were set up for the four diagnostics, so there's an all-employee diagnostic, which I think is the name I typically give to this one. Um, there could be two or three that they need to take, and this shows them the one that they need to take. You can use this kind of question not just for platform, every function you could use it. Um, you could use it for your project work. When you're trying to gather requirements, this gathers the requirements. We're going to start using requirement forms here. Or for business and technology, this is all we have. To get at least a good solid baseline. There's a color you got to add, and that's very difficult to do in a, a structure such practice. But you'll be influenced the way down the path before you have to start looking at the variances. So going through it, you know, we you can set it up, we have set up so you can do it in a number of different ways. It's going to be using flow. This is all we use in Salesforce Flow. Groups of, of questions. Now, the answer is set. It's, it's set up to change as well, potentially, but it's all aligned. So if you're asking about something that's more mature, you want them to rate it based on a more mature sense of the thing. So you can talk about that personally or, or just take a look at it. You don't have to worry about the baseline because we will normalize things for you. We'll standardize things for you, the system will. Um, so go to the other one, the other So every single diagnostic is the same size and scope. It's, it's a set of pages, a set set of pages, four questions on each, and there are four statements on each, each that you rate your organization on. A sales rep wouldn't see the same language as a, you know, an executive would rate. A sales leader wouldn't see the same thing as a salesperson. It's, it's all aligned, so you know how they answer about the same functionality that you would try to find out about, but it's in their language, which is it took two and a half years to get that get that finished. So finish it up, you get you obviously get a the dashboard. You get a dashboard <laughs> in Salesforce that will start giving you just the initial scores. There's lots of ways to look at it, but um, we're going to switch to the way we switch. To we 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 are still we can still build a report manually today, but we're going to keep building up phases of this so that our recommendations, which we don't have to subjectively bake, this the framework of solution aligned with score and maturity, they tell us what we need to do. We don't want to get in the way of that for your organization, so we're trying to build something where we can do more of that ourselves. But everyone needs to needs to be aware. So
So the, the result, the example of the result, is the number of views of things. As you get more and more people going through, you get an overall, an overall organizational Salesforce program score, kind of like a FICO score. It's, uh, it's based on a very objective, very mathematical model. It's not something that we set. It's set by your people and your responses. And you're, you're more than trusted because it is based on things that are really logically are constructed. Um, you have those four competencies. Small difference in competency is scary. We like this one because it was very flat. You don't want something it's like building a brick wall on all of these charts. Something gets ahead, we all know that if we put in too much functionality, it doesn't hold up. They settle back to kind of the average of what most people around them are doing. If you build a really great lead generation program but don't feed it into sales or tell sales how to manage it, you got a whole pile of leads that they don't follow up on because they're not sure that they're good or what they should do with them because you haven't qualified them in the right ways for those things. You get your functional categories. So, um, and because these are all constants, you can trust that the, the lowest bar is your is your priority. Now, if you're going to do something else, you can do it in relationship to what's missing in that function. So you can do anything you need to do, but you can help uh, where you've got the greatest bottleneck or shortcoming in the course. So this kind of scoring um, um, different pieces and parts of the organization is important. What's the recommended action all driven by the system? And ultimately, what does it mean to your score? How are you going to improve your score? This is a lot of detail. Don't expect you to have to understand it all, all right at the moment. But um, the key to the demonstration is if you can't ask a structured set of questions, if you start from the question, what should we do with a whiteboard or a blank piece of paper and say, what do you want? I know what that'll give you. It'll give you a chart. And increasingly over time, the more you do. If you think you know, structurally, you're asking them when they're when they're ready for the next thing, or you telling them, "Here's what's up the next. You're going to want to apply," and they're saying, "How do you know? You, know you, you can't jump. At, you can't jump layers. You're going to brick wall. You go layer by course by course by course. You try to jump up too high, it falls over, or it, it waits until somebody catches up, and people don't like to wait around." So our goal is to bring those, you know, performance level over time. We tend to stay on that flat line until something bad happens and somebody says, we need a better something. New campaign, new sales meeting, uh, new CRM system. You know, it's, the, it's the big decision that they're trying to fill the hole with. Unfortunately, market and customer and channel is continually changing. So the need usually goes up for everybody. And if you don't keep up with it more incrementally, that's where you're, you're losing customers and competition finds these big holes that the arrows point to. Ultimately, if you build those four competencies, which the framework is doing, it's constantly asking the four, it's just trying to say, do this, 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 and this. And where are you weakest? Because if you have a bottleneck, that's what stops growth and growth. <coughs> you build those in, you have more incremental improvements, smaller projects that are part of the program, more incremental, more agile. Less big name, big project, hoping that that'll be the solution to something big. It never will be. There'll always be little tiny incremental changes. And building that into every point helps you figure out what that is. Competition misses those squares for those little triangles. Your executive and leadership team loves you and write your checks all day long to pay for the next thing. What do we do then? Client side. We've been doing this for a long time, the same things. This new tool set and building the, uh, the framework into Salesforce is so exciting for us. It takes our program planning and our program governance, governance the top and the bottom to a whole new level. <clears throat> Bill, do you guys want to get it? I think that we are going to multiply that so many times it's going to be as far as anything else. And um, this solution deployment platform administration, critical to the success of an organization, but it's got to be wrapped in the commitment to. So lighter on technology than probably you're used to, the governance is not easy. But if you can ask the next best set of questions to help you figure out where you're at, and if you're good in all ways, the next best set of questions in the way each group wants to be asked. 
and get those answers and jump into the ends and measure to be able to record it. The smaller the amount, the amount of 32, you know, eight pages of plus of statements they just assess based on themselves. It's small damage, not bite sized. We were talking earlier uh, the other day about, you know, it's, it's like an elephant, but again, everybody knows the, the idea of you read by his people. And everybody can do an elephant. Governance is like that. You can't do it all once. It's not big projects, it's programs and small projects. So that's it. We really appreciate it. I um, any I'll take questions or anybody have any questions at this point. Yes. Yep, you can, you can, so the background, the language is set up so that if you use partner versus customer or member versus customer, you can, you can change those and the whole, the whole thing changes that reference. So the variables, any word can be changed to something that's equivalent. Not, not a synonym, it's, it's much more structured. And it's not something we subjectively did. Who did it through painstakingly? Analyzing language, measuring it, aligning it, all objective. Um, the only thing subjective is what version of a word you want to use that is truly equivalent and very isolated. When you use big words like rules, it's, we can tell you what that means, but it's a big word. And you, you, know, you ask everybody what a rule is, we're going to give you a different definition. Does it include consequences? Does it include accountability? Does it include a description on how you follow the rule? Does it include the judgment or decision of whether or not that rule is even an ordinance and the rule that follows the organization? So if you break that down into its pieces, rules will happen, but it'll happen in smaller components. If you try to create an object in Salesforce called rule, you will not be able to get it done. Because somebody's going to ask you for that same thing in a different way, and you're going to have to duplicate that information in that. And somebody else can ask in a different way. Yes? Yep. The question was how does the model scale um, for the different uh, for the markets or industries? Or it, it's just language. A customer doesn't say, you know, think about how what you expect from an organization. You, you expect them to be able to approach you and get your attention. You expect them to be able to already know your needs or understand your needs and respond to the needs you have. You expect them to um, be relevant at any point. If they're asking you to purchase before you understand what it is in a complex environment, you will, they might not say it, they might just be irritated by it. If you make sure you hit all the right buttons before you say, are you ready to make a decision? Or let's go with that thing. <laughs> you know, they will, they might let you get away with it, but it doesn't help the cause because things like that irritate people. So it's just language, it works for any. It's a relationship model. So we apply it to company, customer, company, employee, company, partner, company, vendor. You can apply it between internal and between business and technology. So we got a number of those relationships set up. When I say different layers of diagnostics, one, one organization has many types of relationships. It'll work for any, the language changes, that's it. But the language doesn't move within the model, it stays where it is. Another question? Yeah, yeah, I love the, I love the presentation, everybody can have it. There's information um, on the table. If you have any questions, the business cards on the, the middle pile, a couple business cards. Um, you know, we just like to have a, a discussion, but more specifically to your situation. And we would start by saying, let's say we go through a couple of these diagnostics or we can go through it. Before we even start the conversation, because it would make sense for us to understand where you're at as it relates to this. Which just says that we can start everyone with, go so run through, who are you, what do you do, what relationship you work on. You know, run through this diagnostic and uh, Try to have a discussion more objectively as opposed to, again, the whiteboard, 
You can work for him forever, I see that. Like, everybody said the whiteboard is this guy. The whiteboard's full. You know you talk about things you probably don't need to. You know there's more to talk about. How do you, how do you know when you're done? There ain't more done. You know, so credit the whiteboard statement, but list and structure it based on sense of priorities. I don't know how to size this, but yeah, so I hope you're getting this point. I'm very excited, and I think you will be too when you see just the simple stuff of things will end up. Just the basic everything at baseline. Other questions? How many in the room has has uh, have, have gone through our diagnostic? We've been over about 160 people in this kind of flex plan. Wow. So the only one here is Dan. Is that right? You want that one? Um, organizations that have gone through it down the last and complement us on the rest of our program just to make sense because they, they are. They have an objective. A lot of them say, where do I start? And you want to know I know I've got all my bones and all the numbers. Now we can say, if that <coughs> person used typical language this way, and it'll still apply exactly to your specific technology, you know, Salesforce, functional management, Salesforce, where do you functionally need to Any other questions? Okay. Let's go to the I've got 50. I got five minutes left. But if there are any questions, you know, come up afterwards or at the table. Yeah, no, we're go. And happy to answer them. All the cards in. The, did you, did uh, everybody get in that wanted to be in? The drawing? I've had many. Going once, going twice. Somebody in the really far back, so Elena has to walk all the way back. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna, we're gonna, you, we will pull a card, and if there are 20 of one person's card in here after the fact, we'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled this out. Roger. Anyway, that's all I got. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks.